And so taking you guys on the journey, um, when I was a lot younger in year eight or so, and I know we have some of our young viewers watching, that's the reason why I'm telling this story. When I was in year eight or so, we were stationed in our first district in Harlow and it's a predominantly white area. I mentioned that for a reason. So a lot of the boys will be telling the girls, oh, you look nice, you look nice. And I'm just sitting there like, so um, like, what about me? Um, <laughs> and so <laughs> a lot of a lot of the, the boys will be telling the girls, oh, you're nice, you're this, you're that. And I remember one time in PE, the girls would look at me and be like, oh, Marie, why does your body do that? And I felt so low. I felt so like ugly, like, rah, like this is not it. And sometimes when you allow your definition of beauty to be determined by the people you see around you, you will always try to measure up to them. So I was trying to measure up to the girls I saw in my school, like, hey, they have long straight hair, they have this, they have that. So let me also do that so that I can also hear that I'm beautiful. Because if the boys see them and say they're beautiful, then I should also follow that kind of, you know, I guess, example and do what they're doing. So let me get transferred to Croydon. Now, Croydon is the complete different. Croydon is a predominantly black area. And so going from a place where I felt like, rah, like this is peak, I'm, I'm not even nice, like it's, it's, it's as well. And then coming to Croydon, I was the new girl. And I remember, first of all, nobody minded me. Nobody looked me twice. I said, it's as well. And one day I was doing athletics training and then I came to school the next day. And this boy, he trained in the same athletics club as me. And we were sitting in form and then he goes, you know, Marie, yeah, she has a body. Everyone was doing, ah, 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 ah. And I was like, eh, eh, waiting is body. I don't know again. So when they said that, it was as though I had now become visible. Prior to that, nobody looked me, nobody mind me. And so for some of the girls watching, it may be that people only call you beautiful because of how your body looks. And I think that is so, so um, dangerous because your body is not completely who you are. Your body does not define who you are. And it's to the point that I sometimes see people post pictures online and they'll just blur out their face and it's just their body. And I'm like, you are more than your body, you know. Do you not know how precious and valuable you are to God that he gave you his only son, that you're just seeing your beauty only in your body? And so that was me. That's how I saw my beauty. It was in my body. Because prior to that, nobody complimented me. Nobody said anything to me. But now it's like when you're getting that kind of compliments from people, you attach it to whatever it is that they compliment you about. And so now you think, okay, if it's my body, then it's my body that is beautiful. It's not me as an individual. And so... I found myself, you know, whenever I'd go on Boohoo, I saw me on Boohoo, we have, we have issues, but I saw Boohoo, they will see me. Well, they won't see me because anyway, so <laughs> I saw me on Boohoo, I, I would go there and whenever I'm shopping for a dress, all I'd write is bodycon midi and bodycon is like them tight dresses that look as if they're made from a napkin or something. So um, I'd, <laughs> I'd go on Boohoo and that's all I would type in. And I found that because I allowed other people to form my understanding of beauty, it was imp it impacting how I carried myself. I would draw more to tighter clothes. I would draw more to clothes that I guess would show the figure in X, Y, Z. And I think as time went on, I didn't have peace of heart and mind mm. because you're doing something for somebody to tell you something. But when they don't tell you that, you feel like, rah, I put in all this effort. They didn't even notice me. They didn't even look at me. And I really want women of God to not be in that place, like, especially the young girls. Don't be allowing yourself to be subjected to a particular standard because you want somebody to tell you you're beautiful. And because they kind of hold that in their hand, whatever they tell you to do, you will do it so that you can hear that you're beautiful. And obviously, similar to the society standards, you will always be swayed. And so I think there was a time where my friend and I decided that, oh, we're going to do a modesty fashion line. Um, but it never happened in, in, in hindsight. But I believe that God was using that as a tool to really transform my heart. And, you know, talking about modesty, you can't talk about beauty without talking about modesty. And I know people are already tensing up like, oh, my gosh, you mentioned modesty. But, you know, modesty to me is also part of being beautiful outwardly. Um, and as I mentioned already, it starts on the inside. And so as we were doing that clothing line, I allowed myself to be opened up to learn about modesty, open up to learn about beauty in the word. And so as I did my research, I watched videos. I remember Vincent and Nancy, they did a series called Nancy Meets. And there was a girl on there called Nash Amber. 
she was the founder of Set Apart Style, which is like a modest clothing line, not a clothing line, but like a modest um, kind of platform. And she did a lot of videos about how modesty starts in the heart and how it's a thing where you're trying to honor God with your body, honor God with how you carry yourself. And so as I watched more and more videos, I found that my understanding about beauty was changing. And I think it first starts with that willingness to actually understand. And that comes from somebody who back in the day, all I knew was tight clothes and body con. That's it. But, you know, when you allow God to transform your understanding and your thinking, you will see that, Ra, I'm actually more than these things that people tell me and that God has already called me fearfully and wonderfully made.